Hey everybody and welcome back to game two of this series between myself and Mazram in Dracula Cup number one. This map, oh, excuse me, it's gonna be uh, Mazram's pick which is the Boneyard. Quite a fun map I would say. Probably the favorite map of a lot of the top tier players like A Game and Descara, from what I understand anyway. At least a map everyone's very comfortable on I think. Um. I must say, I tend to feel a bit more confident on this map when I get this spawn over here, but it's it's a small difference. Um, and I think some players kind of feel the opposite, in fact, so... Look how far out you can zoom. Anyway, so Mazarum again, we're going to be playing Sylvan on Galaxian, just like last game. Uh, I wonder if I will mix things up this time. Last time, of course, I went... Yeah, okay, I clearly am, because I'm getting a production cruiser, as you can see. Um, so it looks like it's probably going to be a rail rush. That's something that I do quite often. Uh, last game, of course, I went for more of like my standard build, um, and I played very interestingly with air units. It was a little strange, um, <laughs> but you know, Mazarum here. What is he going for? Looks like LEV fabrication's out pretty early, and he's gonna make some to scout too. Um, probably he's not wanting a repeat of the last game, and I would say this is actually fine to scout out with these LEVs here because he wants to know that this is coming early. Um, wants to send them out and like get wind of that before it gets you know like to here or something. Because if, if he doesn't even know that like a railgun rush is coming until it's at his door, he's probably in trouble. Um, but I think what he's looking for right now is actually my production cruiser to push out with uh, sand skimmers on it off of one PC. Um, he's not going to find that though. AV fabrication comes out this time instead of railguns. I feel like that's a little bit tragic, isn't it? Because that's um, sort of the opposite of what he would want. Uh, like last game he got railguns, but he was just attacked by sand skimmers really, and then this game he's getting AAVs, but he's being attacked by rails now. Um, railgun fabrication not yet on the way for me, still not up to 200 RUs, but you can see with the base burner retirement I get there a lot faster. Looks like there's a bit of inefficiency on my line here actually, as I'm not going to get railgun fabrication as fast as I should, but... Um, despite my best efforts, Mazrum is going to see the second PC there, so he knows it's coming. Really good fabrication at 50 seconds away now, so. What do you do if you're Mazrum and you see two PC like this? Well, you should probably, um, I mean, you should know you need to be on the defense now, uh, because clearly I'm going to attack you. Fighter and gunship doesn't really work here, at least not in vanilla. I'm wondering if it can be done in the mod, because the gunship is a little bit tougher, but I still don't think so. And the problem here really is the double production cruiser, right? That's going to cause you some issues. You can try and hold me off with LAVs like this, and that's kind of what he's doing here, but I think what really what you need to do is get railguns yourself. Um, because my railguns are probably better, you know, the Galveston railguns tend to do better than uh, other rails, but they're more expensive. Um, and if you're Sylvan, in fact, maybe your rails are even just better one for one than mine are. I'm not totally sure. I think the Galveston ones maybe still just a little bit on top. But at any rate, uh, I can't... I can't produce them as cost efficiently as you, so you can be on one base where I'm on one and a half and still hold me off that way. Um, and then eventually you'll be able to, you know, push me off of your base there. Getting a salt cruiser fabrication? Not sure about it. But he has bought himself a lot of time because of this um, LAV count right here. And you can see, this is something that this number of LAVs will do, is it'll stop me from being able to just push in and get this ground here. He can't hold this forever, my production is better than his, but he can hold it for a long time. You can see he trades uh, one for one there, which is probably fine for me. He nearly gets a second one though, so... Um, and neither of us, I don't think, have got upgrades. That's probably correct. I don't think you really want to get upgrades in this scenario. But it's, uh, it's quite impressive how long he's held me off there. But I think now I've finally broken through. So now he needs to have the answer, which I think has got to be uh, railguns. But see, he's not making them. I actually make an assault railgun here, and I think the idea was to hold off the LAVs in case he was making more, but I don't really think I needed that. Um, heavy rails is probably better in this scenario. I like Mazarin scouting LAVs out here, by the way, because two LAVs is not going to make a huge difference over here, but, you know, he can get a lot of map vision with them. And I'm actually going to make a base runner, which is interesting. Um, maybe I just felt like I had some extra money laying around. That's not something you tend to feel when you're doing this kind of a rush, though, but... Uh, I wonder if Mazarin is just going to make an Assault Cruiser just flat out, but I mean, if there's Railguns on the field already, maybe he'll be dissuaded from that. This LAV here just going to kind of chew up some, some uh, Salvagers, which is pretty nice. 
Um, Railgun Armor 1 comes out for me. I want these guys to be a bit more survivable if they do end up getting attacked. This guy's casting some kind of green beam across the field. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, because he has a waypoint. I guess I'm just like, whoa, look at that. Whoa. This is something that just happens with the replay mod that Majir made. I'm not sure exactly why. Anyway, uh, I obviously know it's going to take a while for that Assault Railgun to get back there, but I don't really need those salvagers on that base there. They're just kind of like... I was gonna say like dough on the cookie, but that doesn't work. Anyway, you get the idea. It's icing on the cake. That's the expression. Um, two railguns now in position. I need to be careful that I don't get overrun by LAVs. Cause there's actually quite a lot that Mazarin is making, and he's getting the carrier production upgrades. So I think I don't realize just how many LAVs there are here and how many I need to defend against. I'm also not being very proactive here. There's kind of like a push and pull you're supposed to get that like slowly chips damage onto the carrier, like this. Yeah, this is what I want to be doing, and then I can pull back. Or just stand there, I guess that's fine also. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you need to be getting damage on the carrier, that's the only way to really win this, is if you kind of like siege him down. Oh, see right here, LEVs are up on the high ground, they're all shooting at the same time, I feel like this is not good for me. Um, I'm kind of throwing this push here. Uh, the Assault Railgun really did finally get home and took care of those guys. But golly gee. This Assault, uh, this Heavy Railgun here is just like sacrificial at this point. Um, and I'm obviously making sand skims, that's what I need here. I can still hold this off, but not so well anymore. Um, he's even got a bit of a meat grinder effect going on me now, which is not good. I guess I want to stay and fight it though, but I don't think that's a good idea. And Mazarin should really chase here, like I've kind of thrown this push, and the reason that this happened was because I wasn't making, uh, LA, no, sorry, I wasn't making Sand Skimmers to like respond to his, my, my opponent's Sand Skimmer count there, or LED count, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean like, he definitely had a window where he could have pushed in there, and also I left the Sand Skimmers down on the low ground here so the LABs just kind of chewed through them. Once they got up there, I should have moved the Railguns out that way, and then the Sand Skimmers as well, but... So, kind of odd decision making continues for me here. You saw it in game one, here it is again. Um, things still look good though if I can get refinery mode uncontested, but this LAV blob seems to have other ideas. Maybe I can dissuade it from pushing though if I come in here. Um, I definitely like to keep the pressure up. I don't want to back away unless I really know I'm going to lose that fight, so that's the idea right there. And then refinery mode should be on the way now. Uh, there you go. I guess it didn't work, and when I didn't see the LAVs anywhere, I figured I, I knew where they were going, so I'm going to be backing away now. Looks like Mazarin actually got a double support cruiser. No, that's an assault cruiser, isn't it? Okay. Well, then his carrier is going to just kind of stay at lower health, but that should be fine. It's not really going to get attacked at this stage of the game, really. Um, Honor Guard's coming out for Nina now, and I think that's a response to the really large LAV count that I saw. I wonder what the assault cruiser does for Mazarin in this scenario. I feel like... Uh, I feel like it's gonna have some trouble against the um, against the railguns. Salvagers kind of getting chewed up right here. One of them goes down, uh, but I should be able to stop it at that. This hill here is always problematic for me because I always forget it's there. I, I can never see it, but um, oh, this isn't good. And I think Mazur knows it's not good. Or at least he should. Yeah, he really should just push in there, and take them out on his way out. But uh, looks like he's gonna be merciful. Let those guys live there. He'll probably go for the artifact next. No, it seems to be headed off in that direction. I think he can he can go over there and take that guy out though, if he wants to. Refinery mode is finished now, so I'm on uh, almost two bases, but I've lost two um, salvagers here on the RUs, so those need to be rebuilt. Relican armor two comes in, so I probably want to be making assault rails now, and I think I am, although it's hard to tell because there's a salvager in the way. <laughs> Second extraction is on its way out here, by the way. And artillery comes out from Azurum. Wow. So he's really, uh, I think, quite committed to going down that line. He did it last game, too. I notice he's gotten railgun fabrication as well, but I doubt he really plans on making them if he hasn't already. And his uh, upgrades are starting to come in now on the LAVs, but I really haven't gone for any yet. 
I wonder if he's gonna stop that extraction, but I don't think he is. Be nice if whoever was gunning the thing could stop shooting the ground, right? But yeah, I think that guy is gonna get out now. And the Soul Cruiser is going to come in here for a bit of a backstab, but again, he knows that there's heavy railguns around here. This is quite a risky move. Um, I don't think it'll pay off here, but, you know, we'll have to see. I love how those, like, uh, missile launchers are, like, green, by the way. I don't know why, but that always is just, like, just looks nice to me. Oh, what is this, though? He's actually, like, totally gotten in on the back lines there, but again, he seems to be a little bit... A little bit unsure about ever pushing like where he's got an opportunity he's gonna back out of it I think maybe he could have killed off a production cruiser there but it is true he might have just lost those guys for nothing so maybe it's safer to back out there but he is still gonna take really heavy losses on the retreat here I'm sure you can tell um, so yeah no it's not safer to back out I think he should have stayed in there maybe he could have killed them off the heavy railguns get a little bit too close and here like I'm talking about with this hill it's because I can't see it from like here you can only really see it when you like go down low like that so I never remember that it's there so <laughs> I always have such trouble with this hill but the Soul Cruiser actually is doing a very good job of uh, keeping me from just comfortably expanding onto a third base here I can push him out with this carrier so that's gonna be fine I really would not like to lose any salvagers to it here but I think I'm gonna choke that away yeah so two of them go down there that I really think shouldn't have it's probably not worth it for his assault cruiser though which I should be able to kill here that's not gonna get away, is it? Ah, it's out of sensor range. We can send some sand screamers over there and kill it, but... It's also standing still here, which is not really very good for its livelihood. Yeah, that is gonna go down. I feel like he actually could've kept that one alive, just pulling it back. And that's kinda what assault cruisers are good at, because they're so fast. Uh, for a cruiser, anyway. Anti-air coming out for me now, um, but it looks like Mazrum actually is going to be on three bases faster than me, which is uh, pretty good for him. Just so long as he can hold the counter-attack, which is definitely coming here. I mean, I cleared out the assault cruiser, so I'm kind of free to poke out on the field now. Um, and I've got railguns, I've got honor guards. Oh, excuse me. That's really all I'm lacking is anti-air, and I think that's why I'm getting missile ship fabrication here, but it doesn't look like mazrin has got any plans of going down that route anyway. But the Sobon carrier in a nice position here to kind of plug up a lot of the holes in his defense. Um, that's quite nice to see. Uh, the Honor Guard Cruiser is going to be pretty nasty to LAVs, but um, not on its own. I feel like uh, there's actually some risk here. Mazrin doesn't know about its positioning though. That's good for me. My scanner is going to kind of tell, you know, that there's this many uh, LAVs over here, at least that there are some. I probably should know what that means. I need to see now if I can poke over on this side, but the carrier comes back, he's there, and there's also some railguns up in the area, so... I think he's doing a good job of uh, just holding me back, like I can't get in anywhere, just necessarily. So this is actually quite good play from him, I think. Definitely I could be doing better this game, I'm kind of being a little weird, like just lunging out and then like falling back to, you know, hold the eco, but um... But yeah, I think Mazarin's responding to that properly. Oh, but this could be very improper. <laughs> Looks like only one's gonna go down there. You never know when there's honor guard cruises poking out of LAVs though. It can be, like, sometimes your opponent doesn't even know that you've got a line on them. Um, and so, like, they're, they're barely dodging it, but they don't even know that they're doing it. It always makes things stressful when you're watching the replay. Uh, artillery is coming out now from Azram, by the way, and I think that's a cool choice. Um, I wonder if it'll work. Well, okay, I did play this game. I mean, what I'm saying is, like, I wonder if it's a if it's a good choice in like this particular scenario. These two assault railguns here are still doing a very good job of accompanying the sand skimmers. Oh, and the honor guard does score a pretty good hit there. There's obviously no risk that there's going to be turrets involved here. I think this ALM was just deployed, actually. Oh, and then the artillery. Yeah, okay, so I was, I was going to say, like, ALM deployment probably is not wise here, but actually with artillery, that means that if I push, I'm going to get stunned, and then the missiles will just, like, kadoosh, just destroy me, right? And I think my idea of poking him right here is that, well, it's artillery, right? Like, I can just go in and kill it, but there are still LAVs around in the area, and artillery, I think, doesn't take quite as much damage as it used to in vanilla, but maybe it's just because the skinner blob is a lot smaller. But I think it has six armor instead of five now. 
Um, Egan could probably tell you if that's true or not. But yeah, artillery generally pretty weak to strike craft there, so I was seeing if I could just kind of lunge in and take him out, but it doesn't look like it. Third extraction goes down though, so I'm still doing a good job holding up the artifact pressure. And I'd say I'm still pretty far ahead in this game just because I'm not having to worry about artifacts at all. I, I do feel like I have good field control here, so things are still looking good for me. So one carrier getting a little pushy here now, but there are a couple heavy railguns in the area. He probably doesn't want to do this, um, but I'm sure he'll see that and back away now. You can see he's taken a lot of damage very quickly there. Especially the Savon carrier, it's meant to be used at a range. It has, I think, the lowest health of any carrier in the game in a game's patch. Um, so you, you don't want to send it forward like this. And the artillery can potentially be dangerous to the carrier here, but um, not if he's moving. He basically is not going to get hit if he's moving, so... I'm not really too worried about that either. Although I should keep the, get these guys out of the barrage, which it looks like I will. It's always a little bit tricky when your opponent gets artillery, though. You feel like you can never you can never stand still anymore, um, which is definitely what you want your opponent to feel like. But yeah, it's difficult for railguns being so soft as they are to push over dunes, and the artillery can quite, you know, comfortably stay behind the dunes there and just, just be annoying, really. Difficult for the player with the artillery in this scenario where he doesn't have the railgun majority to make, like, a, a push and, like, really be strong out on the map anywhere, but really hard for him to get pushed, too, you know what I mean? So, probe there gonna give away the position of the railguns, but it is, I think, going to be perhaps not a good move for Mazarin. We do actually only trade two for one there, I think, so... That guy's still alive? Okay, so it, maybe it was two for two. He had two health, I think. Did you see that? I'm not sure how this extraction is going down. I feel like the LAVs definitely should have been in position, but that is the fourth one, so... That's quite notable. But yeah, I do need to be really careful with this army here, because it's all quite fragile. You know, honor guards, they're not going to get killed instantly by artillery, but they'll take a lot of damage if they're not careful, and they could die pretty quickly, so... Uh, definitely want to be careful with that. LEVs are going to come in here, looks like, and deny the base runner, but after he's gotten his extraction out, I feel like that's a little too late, right? Um, and now I'm just going to speed the carrier down there as fast as I can, because I want to stop the inevitable push onto the eco, which I feel is coming. There are three honor guards, so I mean, I don't feel like the LEVs can do much over here, but I'd like to keep that covered with the carrier if I can. That was a lot of C's. Well, I guess keep starts with the K, but you know, keep it covered the carry if I can. Anyway, uh, <laughs> looks like some upgrades coming out for the sand skimmers for me now. But I haven't gone for powers. No, I have actually. I've gone powers or two, but no more than that. I don't think that's my plan really to use that particularly much. Um, Mazarin could get the microwave emitter now if he wanted to. I think I'm doing this to try and stop the extraction, but I feel like that's kind of too late. Like, I don't know if that's even really worth it. Well, Mazrum thinks so, I suppose. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> it's care uh, you gotta be careful now. You know, um, you can lose uh, sand skimmers to artillery pretty badly. If you just, like, stand still for a second, or even if they can just kind of tell where you're going and like barrage on the way, you can you can lose them pretty hard. Actually, amazingly, that artifact does not go down. I, I feel like because of the positioning of the dunes here, he could have just like driven it out and used the jammer to get it through, but maybe it wouldn't have worked, I'm not sure. Okay, so it looks like the microwave emitter actually is on the way from Azrum. I can imagine that being used pretty well in tandem with some uh, some barrages, you know, like force your opponent out of an area and like barrage everywhere around it and then just kind of like got to run into it. Guess we'll have to see though, he's got that available now, but it does cost 400 CUs, um, so he's gonna have to plan it, I think. Look at that, it says CUs required, but he definitely has enough for it. Hmm. That's weird, I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> Something just got shot down. Oh yeah, I do have anti-air down it. This triple base runner is here again, that's kind of funny. You 
Yeah, so I seem to just be like trying to poke in and out with the uh, sand skimmers there, see if I can get some kind of advantage, but generally not. But um, it worked there, I managed to pick off one Braille gun. I'm not sure how many sand skimmers I'm going to lose though, but I can't really be pushed and he can't be pushed very comfortably either. So it's, it's kind of an interesting stalemate we're at here, but that definitely favors me if the score is 4-0. Um, one thing I will say, with that targeting jammer being free now, I think making a bunch of base burners and Soban, probably not a bad option. Uh, I wonder, I wonder how much of an influence that could make in the round. Barrage actually landing on top of one of the honor guards here. That's going to do quite a bit of damage to it. But I feel like multiple barrages have to land on the guys in order to actually kill them here. And it's going to be battle cruiser fabrication from Asmund. That's quite interesting. I feel like that's not going to work though. He can't. Uh, he can't really push out with those guys. Um, main bases are starting to get mined out here, so I don't really need to cover this back line anymore. It's really just here that I'm focused on now. And with time, I think I would want to, you know, slowly. Sh yeah, these guys are dead. By <laughs> well, maybe not actually. I think the targeting jammers are blocking his own units. But anyway, with time, I think I want to shift my focus on the map to like this area right here. Oh, that's what I was talking about. See, the artillery can sometimes do a really good job against Strikecraft there. I think they killed like four or five of them at the same time. And this is also really dangerous, the way that I'm moving the railguns out here. Like, if he knows, he can just barrage behind them and then they kind of have to like stay forward. Um, and then things get really dangerous for them. Well, Battlecruiser Fabrication is finishing now, only about 8 seconds left on it. I wonder what he's going to do with it. Um, where are those artifacts though? This one's actually on its way down to the extraction zone. This one here I expect is just going to get killed now, but... It only takes one, I am at four. Maybe he'll get away actually, and it looks like the artillery is vulnerable here. It's getting killed. That's a big deal. Asim can't really let that happen. That was kind of the only thing stopping me from being able to push in really. Um... That doesn't look good. With the artillery gone now, I feel like I can just push in on this side here without too much difficulty. The LAVs are definitely going to cause me some trouble, but not if they just get, like, meat-shotted right here by an honor guard. And I can always make uh, assault railguns if I need to deal with them. Looks like the LAVs are going to deny the extraction now, so that's good for, uh, for Mazarin. And down it goes. I was moving. Someone's seriously trying to like do work here because I feel like this is clearly not a very conducive environment to that kind of thing. Uh oh. Uh, it's pretty good. Not as good as it could have been. Um, I feel like because of the armor upgrades, these guys are surviving quite a lot more from the honor guards than I'm expecting. But like, they're all damaged now. So I mean, if they get hit with a shot like that again, they're just like all gonna die, which would be really fun to see, but also kind of depressing. And this extraction is coming down here. I don't really know what Mazarin can do to stop it. I'm kind of just gonna kind of let him get his extractions out. I don't even really care. Uh, all I need to do is just um, hold him off of this area for a little bit. Like two honor guard cruisers. It's definitely gonna be enough to stop the LABs from pushing through here. Um, the carrier's in position too. I mean, even if he did push in and somehow managed to stop me, I feel like he'd have to sacrifice his entire army for it. And if that's the case, then it's gonna be game over anyway. I'll just push into his carrier and kill it. I do still have quite a lot of railguns here. And that microwave emitter is still not really being used. Although, see here, it tells me he hasn't got enough CUs, but he definitely does. Maybe it's just the thing with the replay, though, I'm not sure. It might, like, only tell me that he's able to launch it if I can, you know? Okay. I think an honor guard cruiser just went down there, actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter, like I said. I I've held him off long enough, there's nothing really he can do at this point. And it looks like battle cruisers did come out. Extraction goes down from Azrum up in the north, but it should be followed by one for me down in the south here. And that is going to be the game. So, that's all of my games for the group stage finished, and I actually went undefeated, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Although, you know who else did was Blue Boost. Actually, we ended up playing a tiebreaker, we just did that today. Um, which is curious, I feel like you wouldn't have expected that, that Blue and I are the the highest scoring players in the group stage, but that's basically just how they got seated. 
Oh, excuse me. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'll be casting the other games from Group A today, so look out for those too. I'll catch you guys next time.